name is Shadi Reyes. I'm a Prevention Fellow at MedStar Washington Hospital Center. And with me is Dr. Lowell Sattler. He's the director of the cath lab at the uh, Heart and Vascular Institute, MedStar Washington Hospital Center. Welcome, Dr. Sattler. Thank you. Today, we're going to talk about the PFO closure approval. So in October 2016, the FDA approved the uh, closure device, the Amplacer, for cryptogenic stroke. Who do you think the ideal patients to be referred for this procedure? So this was a major change in the concept of treating PFOs in patients who had had a stroke because previously their data was never really clear to suggest that closing a PFO could prevent recurrent strokes. There were several trials, they all were in favor or leaning towards the benefit of closing the PFO to prevent strokes, but none of them really had the power to demonstrate efficacy. And then the last of the trials, which ran over six years, which was RESPECT, finally demonstrated at six years that closing a PFO was actually superior to medical therapy. Now, the patients that would be best treated are patients between the ages of 18 and 60 who've had their first stroke, who've had, after an extensive evaluation, no other obvious cause of a stroke short of having the PFO. Once they're identified, then we can talk to them about the risk and benefits of treating them and how we would treat them. There is a dedicated device now that we can use to treat PFOs and close them. All right, so when they go through this procedure, are they expected to be on blood thinners when they discharge? So we have them on whatever their antiplatelet or antithrombotic therapy is up to the procedure. Once we, we complete the procedure, we typically would keep them on dual antiplatelet therapy for at least two months. Now, if they had a deep venous thrombosis or they have atrial fib, or there's a, some other reason to keep them on a vitamin K antagonist or a NOAC, we would continue that and work that into the program. But generally, we just keep them on dual antiplatelets for two months, then drop the clopidogrel and then continue the aspirin alone. And this is a same day procedure. The patient comes in the morning, the evening, the evening? Yes, they come in. The procedure is done in the cath lab. It usually takes a little less than an hour to two hours. We perform the procedure with fluoroscopy and a, and a, a technique known as ICE, which is intracardiac echo. And that's allowing us to get a better visualization of the defect by putting a little catheter on the inside of the heart and, show, and shining an ultrasound beam at the defect itself. Once the procedure is completed, they usually go to our holding unit and are discharged the following morning. And there is no transit of EGL echo? No, the, the introduction of the intracardiac echo or ICE avoids the need for a transesophageal echo. And the pay will be done conscious sedation and the patient will wake up? Yes, it's done under light sedation. Um, and again, um, usually the patient is able to go home the next day. And how long the patient should uh, follow up with you or his primary cardiologist? So we do watch them carefully for the first year. Uh, there is the remote possibility of a device erosion. Uh, it's uh, probably on the order of one in 10,000. So we do watch for evidence of some abnormality in the device eroding into the heart. Uh, usually we get echoes at set times over the next year. And then that would be the completion of a follow-up. So this is really exciting news for the people who has uh, suffered from cryptogenic strokes and now at least we have a solution. Yeah, it changes that. really the algorithms that we treat patients with cryptogenic strokes because in the past, the patient would have a stroke, we would put them on medical therapy and the only real indication for device closure is that they'd have to have another stroke. So a lot of them were terribly anxious because they're waiting for that second stroke. And this eliminates that by having a more effective therapy than medical therapy for the management of, or prevention of recurrent strokes. That's really exciting. And we implanted the first one in the cath lab here at MedStart last week. Right? Yes. And a patient who actually, by chance, had had recurrent strokes and was, uh, was tr thinking about having uh, the closure. And then we got the indication and the timing was right. So he was our first PFO closed. Interesting. So then I would like to thank Dr. Sattler for his time. He's at, again the director of the CAT lab at MedStar Washington Hospital Center. And please, if you have any patient that fits the criteria that was mentioned by Dr. Sattler, please call the number down on the screen and we'll try to help you. Thank you. Thank you.